everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Olivia and this is a channel where I talk about the presidents and make their favorite desserts. I know that this video is one to two days late depending on when I get my life together. I'm sorry. <laughs> also, my hair is having one of those days where it just doesn't want to do it and I relate because I also don't want to do it. But I'm doing it for you guys. And with all that said, let's kick it off with Old Hickory, Andrew Jackson. Also, my printer wasn't working, so I will be CGI-ing the picture of him. Hope you don't mind. And for Andrew, I will be making Rachel Jackson's Burnt Custard. I have to separate some eggs now. So he was born on March 15th in 1767, and this makes him a Pisces, just like me. But from what I can tell, he didn't really have that Pisces kind of thing going on. Um, maybe he was like an Aries rising sign or whatever. You know what I mean. So his parents were both Irish immigrants, and I think he was the first president to have Irish parents. And it's kind of funny because North and South Carolina both like claim to be his birthplace. The lines between those states weren't really super clear yet back then. So they both claim to be his birthplace. I know that he was born in a log cabin and he was like the first president to be born in a log cabin. So if you're really into log cabins, I guess Andrew Jackson is your man. He had two brothers and all of his family, except for his mother, I think, died in the Revolutionary War. However, when Andrew Jackson was 13, he was kidnapped basically by two British soldiers and they took him as a prisoner of war. He was eventually released, obviously, but when he was being held captive, he was still pretty defiant and one of the soldiers ordered him to like shine his boots and Andrew refused and so this soldier took a sword and slashed him across the face and this is how he got that scar that's on his cheek. And he is the first and only president, I think, to ever have been a prisoner of war. So a lot of firsts for Andrew Jackson, but I think that's a pretty wild story. <laughs> Andrew Jackson didn't go to college. He was the second president after George Washington to not attend a university, but he was still able to take the bar and practice law. So that's pretty great. Um, I wonder if you can do that now. Can you take the bar exam and not go to law school? So before he was president, he was in the Senate and the House of Representatives and like all of that boring stuff that, you know, is important. But Andrew Jackson had a lot of shit going on, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that. However, I will talk about when he was the general during the last battle in the War of 1812. Remember, this was the battle in New Orleans and it took place after the war was actually officially over, but they didn't know that yet. But in the Battle of New Orleans, I guess Andrew Jackson really kicked ass in this battle and it like ignited patriotism. And this made him the hero of the War of 1812. He was a national hero. He was a celebrity. He like this really put him on the map. Alexa, how many cups are in a pint? I've never used light cream before. I've only used heavy cream and half and half. I didn't even think light cream existed. I've never seen it. I'm just gonna put this on the stove to heat it up because I think that's what I'm supposed to do. I literally have no idea. This recipe is so weird. All right, so little known fact about Andrew Jackson is that he had to marry Rachel Jackson twice. Now, she was a divorcee, or at least she thought she was a divorcee. Turns out, her stupid ass ex-husband never finalized the divorce, so when Andrew Jackson and Rachel got married, it technically wasn't legal, so he had to marry Rachel twice. And this kind of comes up a little later when he runs for president, but it didn't sit well with a lot of people. Andrew Jackson was shot twice in his life and both of these times were in a duel. Andrew Jackson was estimated to duel like 
a hundred to like a thousand times. No one really knows how many people he challenged to a duel, um, but it's pretty crazy. He was obviously a hot-headed kind of guy. You couldn't say anything about him or his wife without being challenged to a duel. And back then, you had to show up to a duel or you were a coward, as we learned from James Monroe. You don't want to be a coward. <sighs> So one of the duels that he got into was with a man named Charles Dickinson. So Charles was basically talking shit about Rachel um, because I guess not knowing that you weren't divorced and then marrying somebody else was a bit of a no-no back then. And Jackson just wasn't having it. I guess he dueled people all the time who talked bad about Rachel, which is quite honorable. It's like kind of nice but it's like kind of like not nice if that's the kind of guy you're into more power to you charles dickinson was basically like the best shot in town i guess he could like shoot a spider web from like a thousand miles away or something like he was a really good shot during his duel with andrew jackson he actually shot andrew jackson in the chest and Andrew, being the tough man he was, just kept standing because the bullet missed his heart by like an inch or something and he could still stand long enough to actually kill Charles Dickinson and like was okay. He was okay. He got shot in the chest and he was okay. And he got shot in another duel as well. He killed someone. One of our presidents literally murdered somebody. Now, Andrew Jackson was a big fan of Thomas Jefferson, but Thomas Jefferson, who was still alive at this point, said that Andrew Jackson was a dangerous man and that's probably one of the reasons why it would be insane if a president did that now insane where's that damn almond extract all right it says almond extract but i'm gonna use vanilla because i don't know where it is let me know if you're offended in the comments so yeah andrew jackson was shot in the chest and still basically like walked around for the rest of the day before he even knew that he got shot. So this bullet exploded in his chest, but I guess didn't hit anything real. And the doctors opened him up and then decided that it was probably more dangerous to try to take the bullet out than it was to just leave it in. So Andrew Jackson had this bullet in him his whole life. George Washington, I think was an action hero. Andrew Jackson, I think, was a vampire because he escaped some shit, okay? That doesn't just happen. This says to pour into an earthenware dish. Do you know what that is? I don't know what that is. I found this. This looks pretty earthenware to you, right? I'm a little worried that I overmixed it because it's foamy. I don't know if it's supposed to be foamy. I'm gonna bake it anyway, because that's all the cream I have, so. It's said to put it on a, fa a pan filled with hot water. It doesn't really fit on this pan. Where did these people get all this shit from? I was under the assumption that people in the 1800s didn't have anything. So why do they have all this stuff? Yeah, so all of this toughness and like the ability to get shot and barely even feel it earned him the name of Old Hickory. In 1824, he ran against uh, John Quincy Adams and he lost. We talked about this in the last video on John Quincy Adams where it went to the House of Representatives and Andrew Jackson and his supporters basically trashed John Quincy Adams and they said that it was like a bad bargain or something that he made with Henry, Henry Clay who made him the president. But then in 1828, it was finally his turn to run again and he won despite a lot of people calling him and Rachel adulterers because they got married while she was still married to somebody else. Um, and they pretty much ridiculed Rachel a lot for this. And sadly, Rachel Jackson did die very shortly before he was inaugurated to be president. And a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, Andrew Jackson 
primarily thought that the stress and the shame that people put on her was maybe uh, just accelerated her demise. Um, that's very sad. So when Rachel died, Andrew Jackson never got married again. Rachel's niece actually became like the hostess of the White House. She played that role, for a while anyway. Rachel and Andrew Jackson never had any kids together. However, they did adopt Rachel's nephew. Also along the way, which is something that is completely ironic um, regarding the fact that he was a blatant Native American killer, he adopted two young Native American boys during and after the War of 1812. He kind of just sent them home for Rachel to take care of and sadly they both died very young. Um, but this is something that is completely out of character for him. I'm not really sure why he did it. There was a whole age dedicated to Andrew Jackson. It was called the Age of Jackson because he was such an influential president. This is partly because the democratic system kind of began to take shape during Andrew Jackson's time. During this time and a few years before the election, um, the government got rid of the rule stating that you needed to own land to vote in the elections. Now to be clear, you still had to be white and you still had to be a man, but you didn't have to own land anymore. So this election was one of the biggest and most democratic thus far. But Andrew Jackson was not somebody that was super popular. He was somebody that you either really loved or really hated. I guess it probably sounds familiar to us now. Remember that I said that Andrew Jackson and John Quincy Adams ran in the same party of the Democratic Republicans during the 1824 election. But during Andrew Jackson's presidency, they broke off into two different parties. The people that liked Andrew Jackson or the Jacksonians, is that what they were called? So the pro-Jacksonites became the Democratic Party and the people that didn't like Andrew Jackson, people like John Quincy Adams and Henry Clay, became the Whig Party. Also during this time, people that weren't very rich or very poor were on the rise and this was kind of like the start of the middle class in America. All right, so it is in the oven, but I still have a lot to talk about, so I might just sit here and chat with you guys for a little bit. So when Andrew Jackson was elected, he was kind of regarded as like the president of the common man. He was kind of like the president of the people because he smoked a pipe and he would rather be called general instead of Mr. President. And he really demised the elite and he was born in a log cabin that we talked about. So he was, he kind of had that reputation as a common man, but he very much wasn't and he was either loved or hated. He respected Thomas Jefferson a lot because he also didn't support the government having a lot of power and he supported a lot of states' rights. However, this was only true until he became president. And then he kind of didn't care about anybody else's opinions. He didn't care about public opinion. He did what he wanted to do and then hoped that public opinion came around. He also didn't care about Congress's opinion or a lot of other things. And his refusal to care basically about Congress or the public opinion basically earned the title of, by some of the people that criticized him, they called him King Andrew the First because they thought that he was very much using too much of his power. He was not afraid of his presidential veto power and he used it frequently. And this kind of changed the presidency because it changed it from a man who was working for the people to a man who basically used the power to do whatever he wanted. Now I'm not saying that every president did that, but I'm just saying it gave more power to the president. And therefore, a lot of shit kind of went down during Andrew Jackson's presidency and this is why he is one of the most influential presidents for better or for worse, kind of for worse. So first off, there was a law saying that any state could basically go against a law if they thought that it was unconstitutional. And this was called the nullification process, I think. So in 1828, they passed a tariff, basically putting taxes on all imported goods. Now South Carolina 
was one of those states that put all of their cotton and stuff on the world market and they sold it to foreign places. So they thought that they were entitled to get the foreign goods back cheaper. So they wanted to basically go against this rule and overturn the tariff. And Andrew Jackson's vice president, John Calhoun, who we talked about in the last video, he was very scary. Anyway, this man, he supported the nullification of this law so much that he secretly wrote a whole paper in favor of it. Now, since he was vice president, he wasn't really allowed to campaign for it openly. So after they passed the tariffs in 1832, John Calhoun was basically like, I'm out of here. So he resigned so that he could support the nullification of this law more openly. But Jackson wouldn't let them nullify the tariff because he thought that it would have destroyed the union. And since South Carolina was so pissed off and refused to basically pay these tariffs, he threatened to send the military to South Carolina in order to enforce these tariffs. But luckily, eventually they did come to an agreement, so he didn't have to do that. But some people think that Abraham Lincoln maybe took some pointers from Andrew Jackson during this. The whole thing was that Andrew Jackson just wanted to keep the union together. Um, and that was basically Abraham Lincoln's whole thing as well. I apologize if I get some of the dates or like the order that these things happened in. Um, fact check me if you want to. I dare you. Andrew Jackson pissed off so many people that he even survived the first ever attempt of a presidential assassin. That he even survived the first presidential assassination attempt. So a deranged house painter wanted to kill Andrew Jackson. So he pulled out his first gun and he shot and it misfired. And then he had another gun and he shot that and it also misfired. Now these, guns were later investigated and they were found to be perfectly fine now the chances of both of these guns misfiring was literally like one in twenty-five thousand. um this is another reason why i think andrew jackson was a freaking vampire come on he survived so freaking much he's probably still alive all right so the custard is almost about time to come out of the oven so i'm just gonna start on the meringue now I have my egg whites from earlier, so let's get going. So another extremely controversial thing that Andrew Jackson did is that he refused to extend the charter for the second national bank. So the first national bank was created by George Washington and Alexander Hamilton, but then Andrew Jackson came and basically refused to charter the second national bank. And he did this because he thought that it catered to the rich people and not so much the common man. So what he said about this was prostration of our government to the advancement of the few at the expense of the many. So basically he was like, oh, this helps the 1%. So this was probably one of the worst things. It's definitely not the worst thing he did, but it's one of the worst things that he did. Basically what he did is he took all of the funding out of the second national bank and he put it into these pet banks around the country. Now these pet banks, were the banks that basically supported him and did whatever he wanted. But the rest of the country didn't really have any funding or any way of getting money. A lot of businesses had to close because they couldn't get loans from the government. So these banks basically just started printing their own money. They printed their own money to, I guess, give it to farmers and the people that, you know, needed it, I suppose. I'm sorry if I'm telling the story wrong, but anyway, the impact is the same. Some banks started printing their own money and this obviously led to inflation. And this basically led to the panic of 1837 when the economy crashed. We're probably gonna talk about that in the next video. <laughs> After this, I guess it still wasn't enough to sway the public and he won the election of 1832 against Henry Clay. So obviously when America was discovered, we weren't alone. <laughs> Um, obviously people lived here already and they were called Native Americans. Back then they were called Indians. Now is the worst 
time. Back in Andrew Jackson's time, they had something called the Indian problem. So this problem, I guess, is that Native Americans existed and wanted the land that they lived on. Um, so at first, to deal with the Indian problem, they tried to civilize the Native Americans. So they tried to teach them English and um, teach them Christianity and all those things to make them civilized. However, once more and more white people started moving to America and started to start up shops, and farms and plantations, they started not wanting Native Americans to have land anymore and they thought that white people owned and deserved all of the land in America. So these white people would basically do anything to take the land from the Native Americans and that included like stealing their farm animals and burning down their houses and even mass murdering them to acquire their land. Now back then there were laws stating that Native Americans owned their land, yet nobody really paid attention to them and since Andrew Jackson was the president and he was kind of known as being like a fierce Indian killer. You know, during the War of 1812, he was the hero. And that's also called like the French, French and Indian War. So he probably killed a lot of Indians during the French Indian War. He didn't respect Native Americans. He didn't think that they deserved land. And before he was president, he even led campaigns against Native Americans that resulted in thousands of acres of land being taken away from them and given to white men. So during his presidency, Jackson signed into law the Indian Removal Act. Now this act basically stated that Native Americans could trade their land in the Cotton Kingdom, which was east of the Mississippi, and move to a place in the west, which is located in modern day Oklahoma, which is part of the Louisiana Purchase. And this was called the Indian Colonization Zone. Now this law wasn't really supposed to allow for forceful action against the Native Americans or coercion in order to acquire the land from the Native Americans, but a bunch of people, Andrew Jackson included, ignored this basically, and that's exactly what happened. So the Choctaw Nation was one of the first tribes to be completely expelled from their land, and they were forced to make the journey to the Indian Territory on foot, um, and they didn't have any food, they weren't given any supplies, they weren't, they didn't have any help from the government and I'm pretty sure this was during the winter time um, and some of them were even in chains and thousands of these people died along the way. Um, this was just the beginning. Eventually all of the five main tribes in the US were completely forced to leave their land and make the journey on foot and a quarter of the people died along the way. So. Some of these people wanted to stay and fight and some of the people thought that it was more beneficial to actually trade their land. And some of the self-appointed representatives of the Cherokee tribe made a deal and signed a treaty selling all of the Cherokee land east of the Mississippi for $5 million. Now, this, I personally, in retrospect, think that this was smart, however, it didn't represent all of the Cherokee people and it wasn't what they all wanted. Most of this happened it, during Martin Van Buren's time and eventually 2,000 of the Cherokee people had left their homes in Georgia and basically in all of these states and made their way to the Indian Territory and President Martin Van Buren basically sent the army to Georgia to expedite the process to make sure that there was none left, I guess. And they held these people um, basically at gunpoint and they put them in chains and they basically held them there while white people looted their homes. Um, and then they forced them to make the 1200 mile journey to the Indian Territory. And the government promised the Native American people that the Indian Territory wouldn't be touched and it would be their sacred land. But as America grew more and more, the Indian Territory got smaller and smaller. And then in 1907, when Oklahoma became a state, which is where the Indian Territory was, basically the Indian Territory was gone forever. Now this 
very sad part of American history is known as the Trail of Tears because these people literally marched a trail of tears. Now, I think this is something that's kind of not talked about as much. I mean, I talked about slavery a lot on this channel and Andrew Jackson was a very aggressive slave owner and one of him he's one of the only presidents that didn't actually have any remorse or regrets about slavery. He was not in favor of abolishing it at all. But I think that the story of the Native American people isn't as talked about in history classes. It's not as I don't want to say well known, but it's not as well known. I think it's because slavery was something that we literally had from the beginning, but the Trail of Tears was something, it was an event that happened all of the sudden. You know, I think that we think of these things in numbers um, and we don't actually let ourselves picture how horrible these events truly were. But reading more about the Trail of Tears, it is really something that is devastating. And it wasn't just Andrew Jackson, Martin Van Buren also carried it through. So I just think that it is truly heartbreaking that this was something that was implemented by not one, but two of the presidents of the United States. But the Trail of Tears spanned nine states and was over 5,000 miles. All right, so it is out of the oven now. This is what it's looking like. Um, it smells good, but it kind of smells and looks like quiche. I'm not gonna lie to you. It looks so good. I love meringue. Mm. Oh good. Oh, real good. So this just has to go in the oven for like 10 minutes and I will see you when it comes out. I'm excited for this one. The meringue is delicious. I hope I don't get sick. It's done! Look! Can you see how jiggly it is? It's jiggly, but it's spongy. It's like real spongy. I'm very excited. So typical Andrew Jackson and typical president. So after he was done being president, he went back to his home, which was in Nashville, Tennessee, and he died of heart failure in the year of 1845 when he was 78 years old. All right, let's try this. Now I just took this out because, um, I'm impatient AF, but it's probably gonna be really hot. <laughs> but, ooh, I was expecting it to be like, kind of like hard, like a cake to cut into. That is like, it went in like soft butter, this knife. I don't know how to get it out. Um, it's probably the pan I use, but the meringue to custard ratio is a bit off. Can you see that a little bit better maybe? It smells like eggs. <laughs> Wait. This is really good. It doesn't taste like eggs. I thought it would taste like eggs. It tastes kind of like a very sweet vanilla pudding, but like heated up. Some of it tastes like eggs. So do I think that Andrew Jackson was a good president? No, I don't. I think that he was super selfish. I think that he did what he wanted and didn't really pay attention to what anybody else wanted, even for the better or the worse of the country. I think that two of the three major things that he did were horrible. One of them led to an economic crisis and the other one led to thousands of Native Americans dying. I think the nullification of South Carolina was to keep the country together, so that one whatever. I think that some of the things that he did kind of left stains on American history. Uh, however, I do think that he kind of changed the presidency by adding more power to the position. Whether you think that that is good or not good is up to you. Andrew Jackson. Is he as hot as Charlton Heston? Um, no, I think Charlton Heston in the 1953 biopic of Andrew Jackson uh, looked pretty good. I don't think Andrew measures up. All right, everybody, and that is the video on Andrew Jackson. Um, I know that it was a bit of a wild one, but he was a bit of a wild one. I highly suggest you guys do more research on these presidents because there is a lot 
about them and I don't want these videos to be over at an hour long so I skim over some stuff but so please please if you want to do your own research about it as always my research will be linked down below comment down below who is your favorite president so far and which president are you looking forward to the most and I'll see you next time for the eighth president Martin Van Buren haircut and all